So recently, I was asked via a comment how you could tile a rasterified image. And now, because of the 1.4 version of Inkscape, that has just become very easy to do indeed. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how you can tile a rasterified image using the new feature on the Shape Builder tool within Inkscape. So without further ado, let's get started. Now first we're going to need to create the shapes that we want to separate this picture into. Now I'm going to separate it into nine squares and this is a very simple method in order to do that. First we're going to need our squares and rectangles tool which you can find on the left hand side right here. Give that a click and then I want you to create a square over the entire image. Now at the moment I haven't got a fill colour on that square and I've only got a stroke but by adding the fill colour you can see that it has now covered everything and of course the opacity is still down so I'm going to turn that up full and now we have our black square and we're not going to need the stroke so I'm going to hold shift come down to the red X and give that a click that's now removed the stroke now with that square created we're going to go to our select tool the reason we've gone to our select tool is so we have access to the properties toolbar for the select tool across the top. In particular, these two boxes right here. And it is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. Now I've already shared this in a previous tutorial, but I'll go over it again. These values here can be used like a sum, like a mathematical sum. I'm going to click this little padlock. That basically means that when I change this value, it will keep the proportions for this square that we created by automatically changing this value for me. But I want it to be three boxes going across and three boxes going down. In total, there'll be three, six, nine squares. So in order to do this, because we have this locked, we're going to time by three. Now, of course, because we have that padlock already selected, whatever I change to this will happen to this. So we're going to create a sum. We're going to use a slash as the divide. And then we are going to divide it by three. Just like that. Now, when I press enter. We have the perfect sized box just like that. We now have the shape that we need. And all it is a case of is right click, duplicate, and then move that along. Now snapping will make this a lot easier. And if you haven't got snapping turned on, you can find it in the top right corner. But once you have, you can now create nine of these squares that cover the entire image. Alternatively, you can do it in the way that I like to do it which is by selecting one of the squares and before you move it, press space bar and then without letting go of the left click, press space bar again and then just snap it, pressing space bar for every single one, like so. The last one, you don't need to keep you can get ready we've got the nine squares that we now need right here so now we have the basis of what we're going to use for the image now just a quick brief explanation now as you can see i've zoomed out a little bit and i have also duplicated this now the reason i have done this is to show you how you would normally do it before the 1.4 update. You would select a square and then you would come over to this image and then you would have to individually make sure that this image was selected and then go to clip. And as you can see, it's 
clicked the top left square of the main image. Then you would have to do this again. And of course, set it to the right place, which can also be very, very tedious. But once you have it correct, you could then select them both again, set clip. And now you have your second piece and you can snap it to the first piece. But as you can tell, doing that nine times, or if you had more squares or more pieces you wanted to cut out of the image, it's very tedious and can take a long time. So now we're back to our image. As you can see, I have not changed anything. It is exactly the same as when I created it. But now we have the squares and the image. So we can select all by holding control and pressing A, or you can click and drag a bounding box over it all. Once you have, go to your shape builder tool. Now, as you can see, this shape builder tool has already got the image behind and the nine squares in front. Now, this one seems to be just slightly off. As you can see, if I zoom in, it's not quite aligned properly. So I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to go to this square and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned correctly. That looks about right. And now selecting everything again, I can go back. And as you can see, it is now very much all lined up. But now we have everything lined up as it's supposed to be. We can simply just click on every one of the squares like this. Once you're done, you can select the tick to finish. And we now have our image cut into separate pieces. But now there's one other thing that you can do with yet another feature added in 1.4 of Inkscape. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to select one of these squares. Now, as you can see, it is 666.666. I didn't actually aim for it to be that value, but okay, we've got the number of the beast. So what I'm going to do with this is keep this in mind, or I can highlight it, right click and copy. We're going to need that for the next step. Now, the next step is to enable the grids. More specific than that, the modular grids that have just been added. So in order to do this, you need to go to your document properties. Again, you can do this by going to file and then document properties. Alternatively, you can come to the right toolbar and select this little page icon and that will bring open your document properties. Now, within the document properties window, come over to grids and you will see that there is this new option modular select that and it will give you all the settings for your modular grid now as you can see all these squares are quite small we want them to be a lot bigger so for that we are going to go with our block width and height now of course we're going to select it all and paste and then we're going to do the same with the next one and just like that we now have all of the boxes at the right size now for this we are simply able to take this piece move it across and as you can see it is the perfect size so now you have all of the squares evenly placed apart from each other and you can also increase the gap which you can find right here gap x gap y this is going to increase the gaps between all of your clipped images alternatively you can also put a margin now the margin is going to make sure that you have a border set within or just outside of these squares which allows you to have more of a bleed area around each one of these images if you're needing to print it out. 
You can also go to your view and turn your grid lines off. And just like that, you now have your rastified image separated into as many shapes as you want. Or you can simply tile them like I have done here. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.